Hey guys, welcome to our very first social studies lesson from my bedroom. <laughs> is this so crazy that this is how we're doing school for the next few weeks? I miss you so much, but I'm going to try to make these videos so you can feel like I'm still here teaching you. Here's what you have to do. You have to log on to the content section. So you got to get out of digital learning days go to the content section and you have to go to social studies and you have to click on Civil War 4.2 day one. You will see the PowerPoint um, and I'm going to teach from that PowerPoint and I'm going to tell you when to go to the next slide. So you got to click. You guys have to be the clickers, not me. I'm going to say my words, but you have to click. The cool thing is you can play my video over and over and over again until you really understand it all. But you're going to need this video and the PowerPoint to do the worksheet on Abraham Lincoln. And, and the Digital Learning Day thing is a map. And in, for this video, you're going to need that map. So if you can print at home, print the map and the worksheet before you watch my video. So you'll have everything ready. Okay? So pause my video if you need to. Print that stuff out. I'm going to start teaching social studies for the first time on Digital Learning Day. Okay, so the PowerPoint is called Leading Figures of the Civil War, okay? And last week we talked about the rumblings, the things that were happening that were leading up to the Civil War. Remember we talked about Uncle Tom's Cabin and Harriet Beecher Stowe. Remember we talked about John Brown's raid on Harper's Ferry where he wanted to arm slaves. And we also talked about slavery and states' rights. Remember they were trying to figure out what was a state right and what was a federal right. And this week, we're going to focus on five or six really important people whose names you're going to hear when we start talking about battles. I thought it might be good to do some background digging on them. So when we learn about them in battles, you'll kind of already know who they are and their story. And then it won't be like new event and new people. So anyways, this week we're doing people. And we're going to start with the most famous person of the Civil War. It's like maybe my second or third favorite human, um, and that is Abraham Lincoln. Abraham Lincoln was our 16th president. So you have the slideshow open, and you're on the first slide that says leading figures of the Civil War. And um, when I say go to the next slide, I'm going to try to say the number so you'll know which slide I'm reading from. But if not, pause my video, find the slide. You can, that's the beauty, you can pause me. All right, so Abraham, the very second slide, slide number two, says Abraham Lincoln was born on a poor farm in the state of Indiana in February 1809. So he was not born rich. You can see this, this house that looks like a, one room house. There probably was an upstairs that he slept in and him and his family lived there. They did not have a lot of anything you can see. There's no grocery stores. I mean, this was a very different time. Slide number three. He taught himself to read and everything else he needed to know to be a successful lawyer. So just like Martin Luther King, he was so motivated to learn that nothing was going to stop him. He didn't go to school very frequently. So everything he knows I'm sorry, everything he knew, he taught himself through reading different books. He could not get enough of books. He even taught himself how to be a lawyer without college or anything. Um, this was a different time. All right, we're going to slide number four. Um, Lincoln got into politics. That's like government. And he became a congressman for the state of Illinois, which is right next to Indiana. He went to Congress and he spoke on the people's behalf. And he got sick of it. And so he went back to his law practice in Indiana, but during that time, slavery was like at an all-time high, and he just was so sickened by owning people and was really for the abolition um, cause, and he was an abolitionist, and he felt that he needed to run for president because nobody running for president at this time was anti-slavery. Every single person that was running wanted slavery, and he just really felt in the core of his being that that was not right. Um, next slide, slide number five. Abraham Lincoln was elected president in 1806. He was the only candidate running that was anti-slavery, and he was elected president. Now, we talked about this last week, but as soon as he became president, people started freaking out, especially in the South, because they were convinced 
that he was going to abolish and do away with slavery, and they would all go broke. This was their main source of income. And so the southern states decided rather than wait and see what was going to happen, they were going to secede or they were going to leave the United States. Now, that didn't mean they were going to pick up their state and move it. We know that's not possible like it is in this picture on slide number six. But it does mean that they were deciding that as a group, all those states on the red in the picture were going to become their own country. So it would be the northern states of America and the southern states of America, two different countries. That's what they had decided on. And then any land out west was going to be divvied between the two. So one would go to the north, one would go to the south. One would go to the north, one would go to the south. And that's just how it would be decided. However, Abraham Lincoln did not want that. And he just always said, I am the president of all of the states, of all of the United States. So as we move through this Civil War unit, you're going to hear a ton about Abraham Lincoln. He was a key important person. When you hear his name, I want you to think of anti-slavery and the Civil War. Those should go together. And he was very famous for his speeches at this time. His most famous speech by far was given on a battlefield where lots of fighting and death had occurred. And the battlefield was in the state of Pennsylvania. Um, and it was called Gettysburg Battlefield. And that's on slide number seven. You can see him giving a speech, giving his speech on that stage. And on slide eight, you can see this famous speech is known as the Gettysburg Address. Address is like a speech. It's the Gettysburg speech. And it starts, Four score and seven years ago. If you want to hear it, you can Google it. There's many recordings of it. It's a very famous speech because it's all about bringing the United States back together. At this time, he'd given the speech the war was over, and he was trying to mush everybody back together and say, we are one country. So I want you to grab that map that you hopefully were able to print or just look at a map. And I'm going to read through some places we've already learned about and talked about. And if you have that map printed, I want you to label it. And if you don't, I want you to point to it on your screen. It can be on the little map I have on slide number nine. But I would prefer if you could print it. Um, these places are, you should know, but if you don't, you have the internet available to you. So you can pause my video, find it on Google, label it in your map, and then restart my video again. I want you to label the Great Lakes. Remember, they're up near New York, where I used to live. I want you to find the Erie Canal. Remember, that cut through the middle of New York, Buffalo, all the way to the Hudson, all the way to the ocean. I want you to find Washington, D.C. Remember, that's between Maryland and Virginia. It's its own um, separate district. It's not a state. I want you to find Boston, Massachusetts. That's under Vermont and New ha Hampshire, and it's got that little weird piece hanging out. I want you to find New York City, where I'm from, and then it's way down over here. And then I want you to find Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. Pennsylvania is the rectangle state underneath New York. And then the last thing I want you to do when we're looking at slide 10 now is I want you to find Gettysburg. And on slide 10, Gettysburg is the star. Gettysburg is the new place we're learning to label on the map. On your assessments coming up, you will be given a map and it will say, where is Gettysburg? And it might have New York City and D.C. and Philadelphia, and you'll have to know where Gettysburg is. So on your map, I want you to label Gettysburg. Now this is the end of my video. You're going to go back into the digital learning section and you're going to do the work that's in there, which is an Abraham Lincoln reading. Um, once you get that done in your map, I want you to put it in a pile and you're going to have a day one pile. So when we get back together, you're going to hand me a big old stack of this work. You have to be really organized. You can't lose it because I won't see you again for a couple weeks. And I want to be able to see all the work you put in and know that you learned in our time apart. I am missing you so much. I cannot wait to see all of you and give you all the hugs. Thanks for listening to my lesson, kiddos. I'll see you tomorrow for reading. Bye.